I figure I'm lucky that they'll, for what, as many people who passed away and uh, after seeing the damage, uh, I'm just thank thankful I'm alive. On the night of May 22nd, 51-year-old Mark Lindquist was doing what he loves. For five years, Mark took care of people with disabilities. And just like every Sunday, Mark was looking after three men with Down syndrome. Things are pretty hectic there with those three guys, so things went from bad to worse pretty quick. Uh, the tornado siren went off. So I heard the boys back in the utility room and started covering them up with, with uh, mattresses. And I laid across the two of them on top of the mattresses and Ryan laid across the other, other one. And I can remember hearing the tornado and the awesome sounds of destruction. And um, I remember the house shaking and kind of exploding and that's it until I woke up here in, in August. Mark was at 2302 Iowa Street when the tornado hit. And I knew by then that was like ground zero, one of the worst hit areas. And so then, of course, we were frantic. For the next three days, Mark's sister Linda and the rest of his family searched for Mark. We checked every hospital within 100 miles and we gave them a description of him. But um, none of the hospitals had anyone that matched that description. The family checked the morgue, but no sign of Mark. So they hoped for the best and expected the worst. The alternative was really frightening. Um, you know, was he dead or was he injured? And so that was really hard. For three days, we went through that. But I have an 11-year-old son who, he, every time the phone would ring, you know, he would run to the bathroom and hide because he's afraid they can tell him I was dead or something. But, but then the call came that offered Mark's family some hope and relief. Freeman Hospital had one John Doe left. There was nothing about him that looked like my brother. I could have never identified him. He was so badly injured. But he has hazel green eyes and he has a brown fleck in one eye. And that was actually how we positively ID'd him. Mark was blown two houses away. He was in a coma for seven weeks. His injuries included broken ribs, cuts, head trauma, and the loss of his entire shoulder bone. He was so badly injured, his family didn't think he could pull through. The first time I saw him in the hospital and he was <gasps> struggling to breathe and he just couldn't breathe. And he was actually thrusting up to be able to get air to breathe. And I thought, I know I went back out and cried and said, he's, he's not going to make it, is he? And the nurse said, I don't know. I don't know. I've had time to deal with losing the boys and I know they're in a better place. And uh, I know that God saved me for some particular reason and I'm here to, I'm his vessel to do with what he wants. For Mark Lindquist, invisible scars cut the deepest. On the night of May 22nd, 51-year-old Lindquist was carrying out what he believes is his life's calling, helping those with disabilities. You heard the sirens go off, and your first instinct was to, to save these guys. Save the boys. Had to, Why we, was that your first instinct? Well, because I'm, I'm responsible for them, you know, and I loved them. Mark was looking after three men with Down syndrome, 49-year-old Trip Miller, 56-year-old Mark Farmer, and 56-year-old Rick Fox. All three lost their lives in the tornado. I feared for everybody's life, and we started praying. And uh, I think I could hear the guys praying too. Trip was saying, you, Mark Farmer was kind of panicking, and Trip was saying, you're all right, Mark Farmer, you're okay. And then we were just praying. I remember asking God for mercy. He, he loved those guys like family, and that was the hardest thing for us. When he did regain consciousness, his first question, what about my guys? And he kept saying, if I could have saved just one of them. This now empty lot is where Mark became a hero while trying to save the lives of his three guys. And it wasn't until coming back to Joplin for the first time and witnessing the magnitude and devastation of the storm that he realized there was nothing he could have done. I did what I could do, and there wasn't anything more I could have done. It wouldn't have mattered. Do you think you're a hero? I don't know about a hero. I just was doing my job, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't save one of the boys. I didn't, I didn't look at the time like a hero. I was just trying to save, save them. They're good boys, and uh, I love them like you do your own kids, so I don't think I'm a hero, no. He uh, totally was concerned about the three guys in his care, and he did not think twice about risking his own life to save theirs. So he's a hero in, in every way.